have a huge night tonight on Strip Down. Longtime viewers will remember 2012's The Contest. Finally, we have The Contest winner on Strip Down. We'll meet her in a little while. I asked her who she wanted to share the stage with tonight, and she said it could only be one local musician. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on Strip Down, returning to Strip Down, it's Mr. Jay Semko. It's undeniably good It's undeniably better than breathing It's undeniably nice It's undeniably true What I'm feeling I never thought that I would fall in love again But then I saw your eyes look into mine And it was undeniably love Ooh, Undeniably love Ooh, It's undeniably fine To be holding you close and feel your heart beating I'm undeniably yours You're undeniably mine This is a real thing I never thought That I would fall in love again But then I saw your eyes look into mine and it was undeniably love Ooh, undeniably love oh forever 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 i never thought that I would fall in love again But then I saw your eyes look into mine And it was undeniably love Ooh, undeniably love Ooh, undeniably love Undeniably love forever, 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 forever. <laughs> Have a seat, sir. Come on out, Daniel. You can put the guitar down if you want. All right. Guitar down. That's your, and assume that's your the position. Throne. I'm over here? Yep. All right. <laughs> you were watching Strip Downs, ready for it, Jay? 207th. 207th, wow. Episode 14, I believe, you and Kim Fontaine appeared on Strip Down for the first time ah. back in 2008. 2008. Pre beard. Pre beard. <laughs> I, I feel like uh, even before we meet Danielle Coral here, we should ask about that. We were, we were warming up, and one of the volunteers was like, is that Jay Semko? It's a man with a gray beard. What, what prompted <laughs> that? It's so drastic from 
the clean cut Semco of yesterday. You know, a couple of years ago, it's just a ho it's really just a hobby that got out of control. You hobby. know, it's like uh, started off as stubble, and I would often let it kind of go for a while, and then I'd shave it, and then I just let it go, and it became quite fun actually because people uh, who knew me didn't know it was me after a while, and I really got kind of a kind of a kick out of that and uh, I had it actually quite bushy and long it's trimmed down considerably from really? from where it was actually so but it's fun actually you sort of you can use it for many things <laughs> you can al always look wise and uh, and all-knowing by you know caressing your beard all right I was gonna say don't tell me what it's good for <laughs> <laughs> it's probably better in my head okay uh, January 2012 we mm -hmm. started a weekly thing here on Strip Down called the contest basically every week we uh, added a new gift to this big barrel that we called the contest bucket. And what we did was we put, I think it was like 10 or 12 still shots of the most iconic stripped down moments on our Facebook page. And we invited the viewers to vote for their favorite iconic moment. And then we randomly picked a name out of all the voters and they won all the prizes and a chance to be on stripped down with an artist of their choosing. And that wrapped up, I believe, June of 2012. And it's taken us this long to get Jay Semko, and the contest winner, <laughs> Danielle Coral, in the same room. So she handpicked tonight's episode. Good to see you, Danielle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> now, you, you're a big fan from Pike's days way back when. Oh, yeah, from Big Blue Sky. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. I remember seeing you open for the Beach Boys in some outdoor concert oh, yeah. in 89. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I remember that. That was, uh, I think it was 1990. You know, and uh, what happened was we were busy. That was super busy. That was right when the album Snow in June came out. Mm -hmm. And we ended up doing, I think, three, three shows in two days. And we played to roughly like 100,000 people or something because we, we played the big show with the Beach Boys and a bunch of other groups. But we were lucky because we played earlier. And then apparently a windstorm slash tornado happened. Uh, later in the day and we were able to play and then we drove down to Moose Jaw where I think we did a show that night and then we flew to Toronto and we played for Canada Day at uh, Molson Park in Barrie, Ontario with uh, a lot of other Canadian and other other groups and uh, and it was it was fun it was a fun crazy time yeah so is it the first one where you were playing with the Beach Boys with the windstorm Shut it down. Yeah, well, that so apparently the Beach Boys didn't get on, or is that is that you know I don't, I, okay. I don't even recall. I just remember we played, and we it was fine for us. And then later in the day, yeah, you know, the wind came up, and people were uh, disappointed that they. I mean, they were running for shelter. It was yeah. seriously like quite a storm, you know. So the Beach so Boys luckily, were probably sitting in their cars crying, going Bermuda, <laughs> Bermuda, Jamaica. <laughs> oh, why am I here? Saskatoon. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, pretty much all my questions were beard related, but I feel like we should move on. Beard related? Okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. So, uh, she's actually going to bring some props out a little later. You said you brought something. So we've got, oh, cool. we've, we've got an exciting night. Oh, but yeah, excellent. thank you so much for coming, uh, coming down, Danielle. I, sorry it took, sorry we couldn't make this happen last season. It wasn't Mr. Oh. Semko's fault. No, no. I don't know what happened with Strip Down last season. I mean, we've always been a pretty popular show with a lot of interest, but I was getting legitimately like four requests a week last, last year, last season. I'm still probably getting like one or two, but for whatever reason, it was just like we were packed last year and we were booking in like November, we were booking to like May and June. It was just it was oh, wow. a crazy year for us and we were trying so hard to do one every week so we could end the season on episode 199 and come back oh, in season yes. seven. It's our seventh season with episode 200. I know, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank Pretty you cool. very much. Uh, we're going to get to more music, but should we, should we roll the tape here really quick? Let's go down uh, <laughs> yeah. memory lane, Danielle. Memory lane. We actually loaded up some of the crew and drove to her house and dropped off some of the uh some of the prizes here we're, we're rolling it and we can talk over top i don't know if we want to get alex's mic up too alex you were here for you were here for a lot of these prizes the shirt from ultimo Uramoda. i sped it up that was a uh a rough riders hat signed by megan nash a stripped down water bottle do you remember any of these days alex the headphones you can talk we're talking over this the that band that signed it. I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> this is our St. Patrick's Day episode. A fish tank. Did you ever use a fish tank? No, I have cats. <laughs> Jason, Jason Voorhees bobblehead. Like, this is quality stuff, right? So, that was the thing you were most excited about, right? It was. Signed Kim Coates' Sons of Anarchy t-shirt. Is that framed in your house? 
It's not actually, <laughs> not yet. There's the uh, Shaw backpack, which spawned the greatest joke ever because it has a whistle. And I said, <laughs> turns out you don't need Twitter to tweet. <laughs> That was a hit with the, with the kids. That was also you. when you said stripped up, I think. I probably. I get, I get a lot of things wrong each. And Long and McQuaid for dressing you? <laughs> <laughs> a Titanic book? How random. <laughs> it was a good variety. Yeah. Oh, a stripped down award. That was Jesse's award. Yeah, you got Jesse's <laughs> award. I don't even... Oh, Mr. Sicily pizza. Coupon. <laughs> Keeps coming. Dark, Dark Knight, Knight Rises? No, Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Yeah. Well, VHS tape of Friday the 13th. <laughs> I think we're, we're, we're getting Broadway theater pass and shirt. CJ, there's some quality stuff in here. Wow. There's Gutter lots dogs? Of, that's cool probably worth something. Oh, the Spider G shirt. Oh, cool. It's like for a doll, the Spider G one. Yeah. There's a, Ale it's oh, young Alexa. She made an appearance. It's more Bryn with a Darth Vader costume, which I'm sure you wore at Halloween. There's Jordan, who's not here tonight, handing out didn't we give you like a bunch of CDs? Yes, there was quite a few. <laughs> there was a signed a uh, mask, mask yeah. <laughs> from one of the oh. <laughs> few hip hop albums we had on here, hip hop artists. And a stack of hundreds. Yeah. I thought we piled a bunch of like CDs on you at some point. A signed Gainer shirt signed by somebody. Oh, oh there it is. That was what I was excited about. A signed Jake the Snake action oh, figure. See? Cool. And I think Alexa was like, here's Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> I didn't know the difference, so... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> a whole bunch of... Now, you'll notice there's no Jay Semko CDs in there. I wouldn't have given those away, but there's a lot of artists who've come through Strip Down and left some CDs. Rami Shoker, that was who signed the Jason Voorhees mask. And yeah, that was, that was originally a nice jersey, but then we wore it for a Halloween episode, and Jordan kind of got a little bloody. There's a lot of horror movie stuff in here, I've noticed. <laughs> A copy of uh, Strip Down 100. There we go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. If there was ever a time to wrap it up. <laughs> well, there's four minutes I'll never get back. What did, you, <laughs> what did you do with all that stuff, Daniel? Is it just like on a mantle in your house? Oh, of course, yeah. on display. Um, Except for the Darth Vader costume, which I did find a child to give that to. Oh, nice. <laughs> Making a difference. Yeah. One re-gift at a time. The Spider G shirt fits my cat really nicely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Poor Spider G. We had a, he's a gentleman from uh, Regina. Great, great hip hop artist. But he gave out these shirts that were like clearly, he's like, well, I think they're a, a women's small and they were about as big as this clipboard. Yeah. I was like, oh. I don't know how big the girls are in Regina, but it's for a cat. <laughs> All right. I don't want this segment to go too, too long because we have so much to talk about tonight. So should we get to song number two? Sure. All right. Well, we'll let you inter, inter, uh, introduce your own song. We're going to take a leave Okay. Here. Well, I'll leave the capo on here, and, uh, you know, I think what I'll do is, uh, oh, maybe I'll take it off here. The most recent album I put out is called Sending Love, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the title track from that, from that album. Space will not detain me 
from the heart I hold There's a strength inside of us And a message to be sent From me to you, from you to me From two to one, across the sea Behind the sun, around the moon Beyond the stars, eternal and complete I give it all to God I give it all to you I give it all to you I'm sending love I'm sending love, love, love Sending love I'm sending love I'm sending love I'm sending love, 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 love of two sources, groundwater or surface water. Surface water often begins as snowfall that accumulates in the winter and melts into our rivers and lakes. Cities will treat it to get rid of most of the impurities and then send it down the pipes, under the streets, and into our homes. The problem is, the quality of water is being damaged by our activities, and as our earth warms up, there may be less water available in the future. How can we look after our water resources? Find out where your water comes from and how it is being protected. Use less when you're showering, brushing your teeth, or watering your lawn. And never pour toxins like cleaning solutions down a toilet, sink, or storm drain as it ends up in our rivers and lakes. It's our turn to take care of this planet, and I think we can do a better job. What do you think? The following sponsors are proud to support community television. The Hairstyle Inn located in both Lawson Heights and Circle and Center Mall. Long and McQuaid at 721 43rd Street East and their phone number is 664-1966. Mr. Sicily Pizza in their new location at 833 51st Street. Their phone number is 975-0345. Curtis Anderson's wardrobe is provided by Ultimal Yermota, located in downtown Saskatoon, 664-6640. The following sponsors are proud to support community television. The Hairstyle Inn, located in both Lawson Heights and Circle and Center Mall. Long and McQuaid at 721 43rd Street East, and their phone number is 664-1966. Mr. Sicily Pizza in their new location at 833 51st Street. Their phone number is 975-0345. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Semko. All right, here's a brand new song. <clears throat> this is the title track of an album. It'll be coming out this spring. It's called Flora Vista.
just look at you covered in sun I'm counting freckles on your cheek Warm desert wind blows your hair across your eyes And I swear you get more beautiful each day Sure feels good to be alive California sure looks good on you Climb on, we'll go for a ride Anywhere you want, I'll go with you Oh, anywhere you want I picked an orange right off a tree And it tasted just like heaven You got me laughing, you're laughing too I won't laugh with you forever Sure feels good to be alive California sure looks good on you Climb on, we'll go for a ride Anywhere you want, I'll go with you Oh, anywhere you want Are you an angel? Sometimes I swear I'll see you sprout wings and take to the air Am I just dreaming? Is this for real? When you say I know exactly how you feel Out here it looks like we're on the moon Except for a cactus or two here in our lone chairs, more heavy sun Let go of the old, bring in the new Sure feels good to be alive California sure looks good on you Climb on, we'll go for a ride Anywhere you want, I'll go Oh, anywhere you want Oh, anywhere you want Oh, anywhere you want Have a seat again, sir. Mr. J. Sempko on Strip Down's 207th episode. We oh, switch sides for you. There we go. <laughs> Have a seat, sir. Before we talk about that amazing new song, thank you so much for debuting that here, by the way. That's the first time I played that on TV. That's fantastic. <laughs> I this, actually. And I want to talk about this album. But first things first, when we're talking about albums, I was just last summer going through the uh, Western Development Museum. Ah, and there's yes. kind of a, a new display. It's like a year or two old. And there's a Northern Pikes album in the Western Development Museum now. How does I mean, that make you feel? I feel? Well, I guess we were part of Western Development. And, I guess that uh, makes sense. You know what? That was, uh, a, in some ways, a bit of a groundbreaking record because it was mm -hmm. uh, our self-titled record. It was out in, it was an indie, indie record, 1984, before indie was really, you know, the, the big deal that yeah. it embraced that it is now. And... Uh, our whole attitude in the early days of the Pike was a real do-it-yourself attitude. And we just sort of thought, well, you know, nobody's going to do it for us. So we went out, we played the bar circuit back at a time when, when you would play six nights a week in a bar and have to do a bunch of cover songs and then pretend your original songs were somebody else's <laughs> so that you could keep the gig yeah. for the week. And uh, so we did that in 84. We put it out. And it's uh, self-titled. The cover shot, the photograph on there was... Uh, Shot out at Beaver Creek on a really windy day by Kevin Hogarth. Doesn't get and, much more uh, Saskatoon than that. Yeah, pretty Saskatoon, and uh, so it's neat to 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 think that it's in there. I was really very mm -hmm. proud of that. I hadn't, I didn't know that until uh, last year when I went through there, and I saw that. I thought, wow, that's really cool. So yeah, it feels good. All right, sitting here tonight, Jay Samco, Curtis Anderson, 
and 2012 stripped down contest winner Daniel Coral. When you saw that in the Western Development Museum, I know we've talked about that. How did <laughs> how did that make you feel? It kind of made me feel a little old. No. But <laughs> <laughs> me, Still, me, I thought it was very cool to have the music that defined my generation on display at the Western Development Museum, right next to the Cabbage Patch Kid and the Rubik's Cube. Kind of sums up my <laughs> teen years. I saw that and I was like, oh, that's going to make some people feel old, huh? Yeah. And then I kept on walking and then I was like, hey, it's an original iPod mini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and that's what made me feel really sad. And I had that yellow like, sport Walkman too. I still use this technology <laughs> that is now in the Western Development Museum. Okay, let's move past this. <laughs> Released on Valentine's Day 2012, correct? Mm -hmm. This, uh, I was getting just getting used to you being like all country. And it seems like you kind of started pulling back a little bit. Well, you know, uh, I did a record in 2010, which was a self-titled record even though it was not my first solo record, and I uh, ended up doing a good portion of it in uh, BC with a producer named Jay Bittner, who's a great guitar player and a great producer, and he was actually nominated last year for uh, producing a record with George Canyon, who's one of the mm -hmm. big, huge stars of Canadian country music. And, and Jay had a, you know, he had a vision on it, and so did I. And I, I wanted to do a record. I really wanted to do a record that was like a country record and do it mm -hmm. very much Nashville style. So that record was recorded live off the floor with the musicians. They were, all se they were session musicians and great, great players. And, uh, you know, that's sort of the style we went for, really, with that album. Although, as, as much as I, I think I'm country, I, to a lot of people who are purists, I... I am my own sound, and I no matter how how much I try and uh, mm -hmm. go outside that, I I kind of am what I am, and I've accepted that. And I'm at the end of the day, you know, to me, a good song's a good song, no matter what genre it is. And I mean, really, I I've been fortunate to be able to attend a lot of events where there are, you know, songwriter circles or uh, that kind of thing, and you hear mm -hmm. stripped down versions of the songs. And I mean. You know, I heard, uh, I was in L.A. at the ASCAP Expo a few years ago, and I heard, uh, and I think it's Desmond Child, I think is his name, unless, could, please excuse me if I have that incorrect, but he's a, a producer and a famous co-writer, and he wrote a bunch of songs with uh, Aerosmith and with uh, Bon Jovi, huh? mm -hmm. and played a couple of these songs solo on the piano, and I mean, it brought tears to my eyes. It just had a whole different take on the song. And so I, I really love a good song, no matter really what genre it is, if it's, you know, current pop or if it's really, you know, hardcore punk or rap or, or whatever it might be. And that particular album was, it was a, a country album. For me, a country roots album. And that's really what I would consider myself as a roots kind of folk pop artist. And I certainly have country elements in there. Mm -hmm. And I love country music. I love traditional country music. And I kind of grew up with that around the house, you know, my, and also a lot of folk artists around the house. And that really influenced my writing. And, and so what you're referring to, to give my long roundabout answer to your question, Sending Love uh, was recorded in Calgary at a place called MCC Recording Studios and did it relatively quickly over the course of a few weeks. And uh, the producer, co-producer with me was a man named Johnny Gasparic and Johnny and I worked on this and we really had a blast doing it and there are still rootsy country elements mm -hmm. in that and I just find the nice thing is I'm on a record label called Busted Flat Records out of Ontario which is you know roots, pop, country, blues, folk, it covers a wide mm -hmm range and so I'm allowed I'm allowed to really do whatever I like in that regard and I do and I really love bringing it back to a lot of organic instruments like you know acoustic guitar and sometimes mandolin and sometimes pedal steel and and that kind of thing but uh, at the end of the day I just try and write good songs and who knows you know I'm I, I figure the doors wide open in terms of being able to record whatever style mm -hmm. whatever genre I'm, I'm dealing with so I've been really lucky that way we get a lot of uh, musicians on the show that, you know, are obviously very image conscious and they tell me that too. They're like, I don't really, you know, dwell on genres. I just want to write good music. And I'm like, do ya? But I believe it when you say it. <laughs> it, makes, well, it makes sense from you. Well, it's funny, you know, because in the, in the early Pikes days, there was sort of a, a turning point because right when we, uh, 
you know, there was a group of, uh, a bunch of groups that really kind of signed record deals, mm -hmm. which was the, the, the thing back oh, in, yeah. the, in those days, back in the mid 80s. And right around the time we signed were other bands like 5440, Grapes of Wrath, uh, Chalk Circle, Blue Rodeo, and there were probably some others I'm forgetting right now. And the Northern Pike signed around the same time. And Blue Rodeo was kind of given the green light to take stuff a little more rootsy mm -hmm. country with what they were doing with their, with their label. And I was always a little bit envious of that because I, I love that kind of music. And we did a lot of demos where we would bring in my buddy Warren Rutherford to play pedal steel on it. And we were kind of working it that way. And the label really defined it about the time of, of Secrets of the Alibi or Second Red. said, you guys, you really are a rock group and we want you to continue with that. Mm -hmm. And we always had little elements of that, of our roots, country uh, folk type vibe. But at the end of the day, the choice conscious choice was made to keep this as a rock as a rock band and that's what we were and uh, when we do get together and play now we do rock and <laughs> it's fun so looking back daniel favorite uh pike song or jay semko song in general what's the one that really sticks out well my favorite song of yours is strawberry girl oh strawberry I love girl that song <laughs> wow cool well that was uh that was on my first solo record mm -hmm. actually which uh was done in 1995 and recorded here in Saskatoon with Les Canton at uh, Creative House Studios. And, and I love the video for that song, mm -hmm. actually. That's one of my favorite videos. I just, uh, I, we, were, we did two in one day. We did a video for that one with Glenn Kirby as the producer director. And uh, one was down on Broadway at a barber shop. That was for the song My Rock and Roll. Sort of a, an obscurity, really, you know, but mm -hmm. the video is fun. And, uh, and Strawberry Girl was shot in a canola field. Oh, wow. And I borrowed Merle from the Pikes. I borrowed Merle's blue Gibson acoustic. So there's this, I just love the way the colors work with the blue guitar and the yellow flowers. And they had a boom thing out there. And I, I was much more clean cut. And uh, yeah. yes, you were <laughs> clean shaven at the time. My, my and I will say Big Blue Sky is still one of my favorite albums of all time. Oh, cool. Well, thank you. I think that <laughs> was, uh, you know, what's interesting with that particular record. We, it was right after we signed a record deal. We, we, we knew that it was kind of coming and we signed just before Christmas in Toronto. And then we played a gig that night at a place called the Copa, which was a, a big club in Toronto. We went home for exactly a week for Christmas, came back out to Toronto and started recording Big Blue Sky. And originally we were working at Metalworks studio and then uh, they double booked us so the, the hours we had to book there was another band working during the day and we'd have to work at night so we started at eight at night and we would go till eight in the morning that's pretty rock and roll it was pretty yeah. vampire and <laughs> it kind of threw us for a bit of a loop so after a few weeks we kind of thought wow this is really uh because we were just really not used to that it was taking some time to adjust to those hours so then we switched over and we recorded in about five other studios in and around toronto including Grant Avenue Studios in Hamilton, Ontario, which was uh, the Lanois brothers, Daniel Lanois, mm -hmm. famous, uh, you know, writer, performer, and producer. Uh, he and his brother Bob had this studio, Grant Avenue, which was a cool place, so he did some stuff there. And it was done on analog tape. You know, yep, of course and, it was. And people are kind of going back to that now. There's a warmness that's really hard to reproduce with mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of digital recording. And you saw it all. Well, sort of, you know. <laughs> the CD. Uh, going back to favorite songs, mine was kind of a dark horse. I loved Twister. That was oh, my favorite Twister. song until, and this is coming full circle before we get to your next song, it was my favorite song until the first time you were on Stripped Down and you talked about hearing songs stripped down when you and Kim played Girl With A Problem, just acoustic. That almost brought tears to my eyes and that's been my favorite Pike song ever since. And even when I hear it on the radio, I hear it like the acoustic version now. It just, oh, cool. my, my mind filters out some of the rock. I'm like, oh, such a cool moment for the show. That was a very hard song for the Northern Pikes to do. We ended up uh, demoing, we did three versions of the song. One was like uh, really a pop, pop version. Another one was almost, I was trying to make the original demo. I, I had this picture in my mind that it should have kind of a, kind of a Mexican kind of fiesta feel, yeah. mm -hmm. which is really kind of weird because the lyrics are a little bit dark. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of one of the things that the Pikes were pretty good at is taking kind of happy, happy melodies, melodies with darker mm -hmm. subjects, you yeah. know, as in Girl the Problem or Kiss Me You Fool. Those are two good examples of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we really had to struggle to get that get that going. But uh, the big thing on the recorded version of that was Garth Hudson 
played keys on it, and he did uh, some great work on there, and also Crystal Telefiro sang on it, and uh, the, the recorded version of that really turned out well, and the video was really fun. We got to do it in Toronto in a big sweaty warehouse and uh, got to hang out with these cool people for a while. So. Must have been amazing to work with Garth Hudson. <laughs> Garth Hudson is, I have to say, one of the, the favorite moments I've had is just we're doing some of the work that I've, some of the favorite best mm -hmm. moments I've had have been working with Garth and uh, just a super talented guy, you know. You have to quit being so interesting. You need to get to more music. <laughs> oh, I, I could know. just like, this. the next half hour could just be all uh, interview because I have so much I want to talk about, but we need to balance Okay. What's up next? What's up next? You know, I have a, a single coming out okay. in, in a few weeks, and uh, it's from, like I say, the new album, which is entitled, which is funny, I've never entitled my records before they came out. I always sort of was wondering, but this one I knew what it was going to be, because I wrote the song I pr played previously, Flora Vista, in California when I was there, and uh, really set up a bit of a vibe for the record, and the next song I'm going to play is... Uh, a song called Let the Love In. Okay. And it was once again written down there and based on kind of a road trip that happened down through California and Nevada, you know, so. <laughs> again, if you want to intro it anymore, I will do take that. it away, Jay Semko. I will do that. And this is like the world's coolest microphone, by the way. I'm digging this. <laughs> Got the thumbs up from over there. Excellent. Okay. This is a song that, uh, this is the first time I've ever played this publicly, actually. So this is called Let the Love In. It's pineapple season down here on the farm. 400 degrees and it's getting quite warm. We're happy and healthy and ready to pop. So open the doors of the chopper and let's do the drive. And the ghost in the house is quite active tonight. She tries not to frighten, but still causes fright. When the chandelier sways and the earth starts to shake, it's time for the show to begin. Let the moon in. You're welcome, she said, but I hadn't said thank you. You better be good or the lady might spank you. We talk about lawyers, we talk about treatment, we talk about coffee and chocolate and eating and drinking. Yeah, drinking. We let the truth. Yeah, we let the truth. So I threw in a quarter She was good luck Cause I came out ahead on the border I wanted a drink But I couldn't stop playing It feels good to win every once in a while We got in the car and drove into the desert L.A. down the road and the Grand Canyon Way too far We rolled down the windows and looked out at the stars. We let the love in. We let the love in.
comes from it can come from one of two sources groundwater or surface water surface water often begins as snowfall that accumulates in the winter and melts into our rivers and lakes cities will treat it to get rid of most of the impurities and then send it down the pipes under the streets and into our homes. the problem is the quality of water is being damaged by our activities and as our earth warms up there may be less water available in the future how can we look after our water resources? Find out where your water comes from and how it is being protected. Use less when you're showering, brushing your teeth, or watering your lawn. And never pour toxins like cleaning solutions down a toilet, sink, or storm drain as it ends up in our rivers and lakes. It's our turn to take care of this planet, and I think we can do a better job. What do you think? The following sponsors are proud to support community television. The Hairstyle Inn, located in both Lawson Heights and Circle and Center Mall. Long and McQuaid at 721 43rd Street East, and their phone number is 664-1966. Mr. Sicily Pizza in their new location at 833 51st Street. Their phone number is 975-0345. Curtis Anderson's wardrobe is provided by Ultimal Yermoda, located in downtown Saskatoon. 664-6640. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Samko. All right, I'm going to play a seldom, seldom played Northern Pike song. This is called Isn't It Lovely. Lift up your sleeve and show the world your new tattoo Isn't it lovely, isn't it beautiful? It is my sign, I'm a Virgo, she's a virgin Isn't she lovely, isn't she beautiful? Every genius has his problems or hers How many tears can you cry for a blind man? He can hear and he can feel, he knows what's going on isn't he lovely, isn't he beautiful, isn't he lovely? Lift up your arms and fly far away from here Wave your arms and fly away You can escape this harsh reality Isn't it lovely, isn't it beautiful? Tents will protect us and tents will keep us warm Tents give us shelter from the storm that is rising But in the sunrise with the sun just beating down on us Aren't we lovely, aren't we beautiful? Aren't we lovely? I need two more bottles, set them up Jack Don't think I'll be coming back Is there anybody in this place? Is there anybody here who's really listening? Anybody in this place? Is there anybody? Sharp is the razor that cuts a vein that feeds a hand. It isn't my hand, so why should I feel the pain? You've got to know where your razor is and what it does Isn't it lovely, isn't it beautiful? I need two more bottles, set them up, Jack 
don't think I'll be coming back Is there anybody in this place? Is there anybody here who's really listening? Anybody in this place? Is there anybody? Have you forgotten about conscience and morality? Can you remember what it felt like when you were five? Just poke your head outside, take a look around and see Isn't it lovely, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it lovely? I need two more bottles, set them up, Jack Don't think I'll be coming back in this place Is there anybody here who's really listening? Anybody in this place Is there anybody Is there anybody in this place Is there anybody here who's really listening? Anybody in this place Is there anybody Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it lovely? Ooh. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it lovely? Have a seat once again. I'm pretty close to tears that we're running out of time, Jay. <laughs> this is a show that could have easily gone two hours. <laughs> you know, so much more. Okay, so much more to talk about. And uh, 2012 strip down contest winner Daniel Coral <laughs> brought some uh, brought some merch. Vintage brought some stuff. Vintage merch. You got to see this. Vintage merch. All right. Yeah. What do you got? I have got. Ah, yes. That is, as I recall, is that the Snow and June yep. Tour? Yes, tour it is. 90. Snow and June Tour 90. And I also have... Oh, Neptune. <laughs> oh, I love that cover. That was my favorite cover, you know, <laughs> the Neptune 93, yeah. yes. They look quite large. You know, that was shot, that picture there, that, that's the album cover, it was shot in the Great Sand Hills in Saskatchewan. It looks like the, uh, you know... Mojave Desert, but mm -hmm. it was shot down there, and uh, that that was a fun shoot, actually. There used to be like wear with a belt or something you were telling me before, because that was the that was the style it back then. It was the late '80s, early '90s. We wore large shirts and leggings. That was the yeah, style. the style was the big, long, <laughs> yeah. baggy shirts. There, you know, it's much uh, smaller, tighter kind yeah. of shirts now these days. <laughs> we had know. more modesty back then. <laughs> yes. Wah, uh, wah, yeah. Wah, yeah. <laughs> you had a chance to check that out, sir. You know, I want to I want to get that book. I, I talked to Craig, yeah, and uh, talked to a couple people regarding the book and the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I, I would imagine there's some pretty cool stuff in there. I it may be my biggest accomplishment. He asked me to write something. Oh, you did. So I wrote about stripped down, oh, and now excellent. I'm just cool by association because I'm in here with all these like amazing <laughs> artists and writers from Saskatoon. So oh, cool. I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, but, very cool. Uh, Jason Allen wrote a story about Jay Semko pre-Northern Pikes, and that was something I honestly never really considered. I was like, I figured Jay Semko was just like, hmm, I'm going to make a band, and that was Northern Pikes. But there was actually Jay Semko pre-Northern Pikes, where you were in like a, was it a new wave band? And I was, you, there you was made a few people bands. angry. Few oh, yeah. You we made were... small towns quite irate to you the betcha. point where they would chase you and throw stuff at your cars and uh, leaving. Is that is that fact? Yes, it is fact. Wow. We were a band. We were billed as uh, Saskatchewan's first new wave band, and... Uh, this was in 19, 1979, 
in, we did some of our own songs. We did a lot of covers by, they were quite obscure to most people. You know, this is obviously pre-internet and mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing. So covers by bands like uh, the Buzzcocks and, you know, the police really before people started knowing who they were and uh, and the jam and a lot of different uh, different stuff, you know, the Dead Boys, you know, <laughs> bands like, <laughs> songs like that. And yes, we were, we had some challenging situations sometimes in places where people were somewhat intimidated. We also had very short hair and we wore matching suits, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, got we got chased out of town like a few times. Green <laughs> suits from Army, Navy. Yeah, they were great. <laughs> Double-breasted suits. They were $25 each uh, from Army and Navy. And uh, they matched. We had two, two sets. We had the green, lime green suits, and we also had these red jumpsuits. And uh, that was our two uh, kind of costumes. And we had a few props. We had a, a punching bag, a Fred Flintstone punching bag. And uh, yeah, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty, pretty fun. And then, so anyway, that band, 79, the, was called The Idols. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of, in some ways, a precursor to the Northern Pikes because it went through a number of different changes in the band and ended up having uh, uh, Merle and Don in The Idols and the late Neil Morgan and a few other people that ended up associated with the Northern Pikes eventually, including Glenn Hollingshead. And, uh, and then I was in another band called 17 Envelope. And uh, this has some great rock trivia in a way because it was with uh, a good friend of mine, Johnny Sinclair, who was the bass player uh, for The Pursuit of Happiness. <laughs> and he was in the band with me. He played bass, I played guitar, and also Robin Billington, who played guitar and uh, has been a, a really done very well as a front of house sound mm -hmm. tech in Toronto. I worked for Bare Naked Ladies, many other groups through the years. And Al Edgar played the drums. And then after that, I sort of did a thing with Brian, which was a three piece band called The Maximums, okay. and which led up to ultimately the seed of the Northern Pikes. So when Jay Semko sits down and looks back, I mean, I'm not saying there were bad times, but what were like the best times for you? I recently talked to a band who recently got signed and I was like, that's the Holy Grail, right? And they were like, no, it's just a whole new set of, uh, whole new set of headaches and uh, uphill battles. So when you look back, like when was it the funnest? Was it before being signed, before you made a name for yourself in those early days, or did you enjoy the immediate success of the Pikes? Well, that's the thing. We'd slugged away in bars and, and other venues for a few years, really, before anything really happened, you know, in terms of getting a, signing a record deal and getting mm -hmm. hit songs and, on the radio and that kind of thing. So really, ultimately, ah, there were so many good times. I mean, I'm writing a book right now. I'm writing it's autobi autobiographical book, and... It's fun for me to actually jog my memory and think mm -hmm. about these things, and uh, there's just little moments, little little moments of time in time that really kind of get you, you know, that you really remember. And I mean, I can think of many, many of those moments, but I do remember. Uh, there's certain times when you rehearse. I remember rehearsing at a place called Millwood Rehearsal Studios in Toronto. Yeah, uh, really, when our second indie record was out, it was called Scene in North America, and we were we rehearsed a lot. I mean, we were talking like 12 hours a day. And we have some great video footage of this. And there's a documentary being done about the Northern Pikes, actually, which I'm hoping is going to come out this year. So anyway, I just remember some of those moments, all of us skinny guys with nothing on but gym shorts playing music in this super hot, sweaty room and sounding really good. And, you know, those are, those are, nobody else knows those moments but you, you know, sort of thing and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I'm working on the book. I'm working on a new record. There's uh, lots of good stuff going on, actually. I don't know how to say this other than we're pretty much out of time, <laughs> but of time. I need to talk to this year, this year. Yeah, it, it's relevant, this year and this week's audio engineer, I don't know if we can get a light on him and spin a, spin a camera around quick enough, because we are running out of time, but however, you may have noticed, this week, we brought out the good mic <laughs> for our artist. Ah, Ladies yes. and gentlemen, this week's audio engineer, we have it set up, Mr. Alex Stushinoff. Alex! Where's the camera at? It's it's there. What's up, Patrick? It's, it's Pat. Yeah. Doing sound for Jay Semko. How does yeah. that feel? Great. Probably one of my favorite episodes. It's been yeah. really, really good. Yeah. This is and the first time we've used this mic ever. I've been wanting to use this mic for two years, and it has never worked. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, it's we've never tried. You're saving it for no, someone special. No, we tried special. it. We tried it. You're saving it for, for, a, for an artist oh, I, worthy. Oh, I saved it. Don't worry. You saved it for a, a worthy artist. I've never tried it before. <laughs> Things going well over there? Yeah. Alex? Yeah. All right. That's about as much time as we cool, have to great. chat. Cool, great. Thank you very much. Yay! 
We're back. I guess we got time for like one more song, Jay. Okay. I don't, I, thank you. Hey, thank thanks, you guys. Thanks for. <laughs> hey, cool to see the shirts, and thanks for yeah. having me on on the show. Congratulations on stripped down 207 episodes. 207. 2012 stripped down contest winner. She she I know, had, she handpicked cool. you. To Thank share you. The stage I'm with. very flattered by that. Thank, Thank you, you for coming here today. That's very Thank cool. Thank you for all the music that you've given me from like 1985 on. Oh well, thanks. You know, it always feels <laughs> good to know that you've had a positive impact with somebody's life with your music. You know, it's mm -hmm. no no greater feeling for me. So I'll have to say thanks to our sponsors, Mr. Sicily Pizza, Longham McQuaid, The Hairstyle Inn, and Ultimo Uramoda. For all things Stripped Down, check us out on Facebook, and you can Twitter and Instagram us, at Stripped Down Sask. For the last time tonight, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jay Semko. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks again, Curtis. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off the night with a lullaby here, because... Uh, Everybody needs a lullaby now and then. This is a song from Sending Love. And it's, uh, it's called The Moon, The Stars, and You. Just the moon, the stars, and you The sky is so big, your eyes so blue The moon, the stars, and you The moon, the stars, and you
make me do this? 